Hi everyone, this is Mock here at the Gay Aristo and I thought I would just pop on here and tell you how I have been getting on with my PhD application. Thank you for your lovely messages and your advice on how I go about organising my notes for my PhD. But where am I in the application process? Well, you may remember that last time I had submitted my second draft application I sent it off by email to my supervisor at the University of Buckingham and I waited for a few days rather nervously, I have to admit, and then I got an email back. And you know it's all right when it opens with, Mock, I think you've cracked it. Rah! Round of applause in the background. Yes, so not quite there yet. Ultimately, I have to just tidy up a couple of things and what I think will be the bane of my life over the next five years, the bibliography. When you're doing an academic thesis, there's a very particular way that you have to write a title of a book that you're referring to. I can't remember it now, but it's like author, publisher, title in italics, date, pages, all sorts of things. And they're really sticklers about this. And so I just included what I call a literature review. So just a whole list of books that I'm reading and I think I might read for the for the thesis. And I've got to put it in a particular order and write it in a particular way. And that is what my Saturday night will be about tonight. So I'm nearly there. Then it has to go off to the professor for a final sign off. And then I can really truthfully and honestly call myself a PhD student. I think I'm calling myself a prospective PhD student at the moment, but it's just brilliant. I, I really love studying the first year of my master's. I had one more year to go, but I didn't want it to end. So the PhD is a way to make sure that I carry on this romp through the history of country houses and LGBTQ plus folk. And I hope to share it all with you here. So in case you don't know, my thesis is about the country house and queer folk. <laughs> I want to talk about the intersection of country house history and LGBTQ plus people, because I'd always thought that country houses were basically, as I say here, the bedrock of the heteronormative narrative. But this is simply not the case. Houses such as Charleston, Strawberry Hill, Plas Neward, Ashcombe, figures such as James Lee Mill, Eddie Sackville West, Chips Channing indicate the country house is an important and somewhat unexplored part of queer history and that queer people have played an important role in the aesthetic, preservation and continued fascination with the British and Irish country house. So that, my friends, is what I'll be focusing on. And I've just read the most amazing books. I'm going to recommend books on here as well. It's called by a chap called Simon Fenwick or Fenwick, uh, The Crickell Boys, Scenes from England's Last Literary Salon. And basically in 1945, Eddie Sackville West, Desmond Shaw Taylor and Early Knowles purchased Long Crickell House, an old Dorset rectory with no electricity and an inadequate supply of water in this improbable place. The last English literary salon began. It's absolutely fascinating. It takes you right from 1945 up to the uh, early 20th century. So do check that book out. It's re it's a really, really nice read. Um, and it also charts kind of social history along the way. So I'll definitely be referring to this amazing book. So that's my update. Part three uh, on my PhD in my lovely Charleston house folder. Um, and uh, I will let you know how I get on tonight doing the bibliography and look out for more updates. All right. Take care, everyone. This has been Mock at the Gay Aristo, prospective PhD student saying have a great weekend wherever you are and whoever you love.